In this chapter, we will conduct a site survey to determine the optimal location for the VSAT. It is important to note that failure to properly conduct the site survey can lead to many challenges in the future. If you are not experienced in performing the site survey yourself, you should hire a certified SkyVision installer. Contact your SkyVision sales manager for assistance. Before measuring the line of sight, please calculate your azimuth and true elevation online at the following link, www.dishpointer.com. To position your antenna, follow these steps. Type your location and press Go. Choose your satellite from the drop-down menu. Scroll down to Dish Setup Data where you can view your azimuth and true elevation. If you are using an offset antenna, subtract the offset from the true elevation angle to get the actual elevation. Please note that you will be shown how to use the EyeSight application to confirm the azimuth and elevation angles later on in this presentation. In order to communicate with the satellite, the antenna needs to have a line of sight. To calculate the line of sight, you will need to do some basic mathematics. You will be shown how to use the Microsoft Windows calculator to perform the necessary calculations. Where X is the height of the obstruction in front of the antenna and Y is the distance between them. For example, if the obstruction is 8 meters high and 32 meters away from the antenna, you will need to perform the following calculation. Arc tan 8 by 32 equals alpha. Navigate to your Windows calculator. Choose View, then Scientific. Enter the height of the obstruction in meters and divide it by the distance in meters. Choose the equals function. Check the invert box. Choose the tan function. The result will be the minimum angle of your true elevation in degrees. This angle should be lower than the true elevation angle of your antenna. If you do not achieve a clear line of sight, relocate the antenna until this is achieved. In addition to having a line of sight to the satellite, you must check the following important elements when choosing the site. The surface is relatively flat and level. Use a leveler. Convenient access to the antenna. No underground obstruction, such as buried cables or pipes. No interference from WiMAX, microwave transmissions, cellular telephone towers, or airport radar. If a certain amount of interference is unavoidable, try to install the antenna where the source of the interference is relatively far or behind the antenna. All local building codes should be followed regarding grounding, foundation requirements, zone rules, setbacks, and any other codes specific to your location. Roof locations present unique concerns for an antenna installation, such as access to the antenna, the need to properly anchor the antenna mount, and terrestrial interference. Consider these factors before deciding to mount the antenna on a roof. If you decide on a roof location, make sure that the location provides a clean, flat, secure, and construction-free environment with 
a lightning arrestor that is properly grounded, an easily accessible point of entry for two coaxial cables, or a location where the installer can create a point of entry, secure access to the antenna away from unauthorized personnel, an antenna surface capable of supporting the weight of the VSAT plus its wind load, one 230 volt AC or 110 volt AC outlet near the installation site for use during both the installation process and subsequent maintenance work, a clear path or empty conduit to run a 2 inch minimum diameter coaxial cable from the building's point of entry to the base of the antenna, site security, the remote gateway antenna can create harmful non-ionizing radio frequency radiation to humans. To avoid this, the antenna must be placed in a controlled area with restricted human access to the physical airspace between the antenna reflector and the output of the radio frequency. Power should be provided using an uninterrupted power supply according to your local power grid requirements with either rectified 230 volt or 110 volt AC outlets in the rack that will be housing the equipment.